Hello and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. You get a choice. You can sit down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and tempt you with a cash offer on the table today. Two grand. Oh, sorry, you stop. The alternative is to place the same goods into an auction in the hope that you will get a little bit more money there. Now at 45 and a Today the show comes to you from Northampton. Look at this crowd. They've been here since early this morning. They are determined to do business. They want to go away with the real deal. First stop in the dealer's den, a whole army of little men. My name's Alison. Hello, I'm Francis. Alison will be pleased. Will I sit here horrified? <laughs> I'm wondering how I'm going to get these home. OK. Because I like them. Right. They're very colourful. They're not all the top factories, obviously. They're mostly Staffordshire, little Staffordshire potteries, and some of them Burslem. You've got three Dalton ones here. So we've got Mr Falstaff, and then we've got Happy John, and then we've got Jolly Toby. Quite like Jolly Toby with his riding crop and his riding crop handle. But aren't they colourful? They're lovely. And you like them? They were my great uncle's and he avidly collected them. But as a family, we didn't really like them that much. My mum always said she felt they were looking at her when she walked in the house. Ooh, when you use the word avidly... Well, I've got another hundred odd at home. Right. That's a lot of Toby, That's isn't it? a lot it? of Toby's, yeah. On the table, if we had to have a jug that reflected your uncle, which one would you point to? It would be Punch. This one? Yeah. So this is your uncle? We, we, we called that Peter. Hello, Peter. It it's kind of, nice it, to I meet mean, you. I don't remember him buying that, so I think he's had that a long, long time. Right, well, it's money time. OK. So this nice £50 note. Four, there were 31, am I right in remembering? Right. And three of them are the Dalton. So... 50. 100. Mm -hmm. Any more? <laughs> I don't know, Francis. When you came here with them, yeah. in your heart, yeah. where was your money? Probably another 20 on top of that. Oh, good, so I'm not miles away, no. Well, on that basis then, because we're women, mm -hmm. what about we split the difference at 110? 15. <laughs> oh. oh, no. Aww. <laughs> no, 110, does that appeal to you? And then you don't have to take them home and clean them. 110 will do it? 110 will do it. There you go. Thank you. And actually, I think for Uncle Peter, mm -hmm. I will give you an extra fiver. Wonderful. <laughs> there you go. It's been a pleasure, Francis. Thank you, Alison. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Well, Alison, you just have to worry about getting that lot back home. Now, shall we hear some sweet music over on Stuart's table? First of all, you've got to give us a tune, haven't you? Oh. Do you play? Either of you play? He tries. We don't play, but I can give you, <laughs> you a tune. Can give us I can, a squeak I can give you a squeak, right? yeah. Let's give you a squeak. Screen. Excellent. I think that's good enough. <laughs> yeah, I think you proved that you can't play. That's right. Okay. <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, you did better than I could do. <laughs> so I know I know it as a squeeze box, but I mean there's, uh, there's names for it. What, what do you know about it, I and mean, how did you come by it? Um, it was inherited. We've looked on the internet, as you do, and we have found like a sales ledger, which dates back, I believe it was 1831. There's a museum. And what did the museum tell you about it, or you just looked on um, the site? We just tried to look on the on the site, really. I mean, there's quite a lot of information about C. Wheatstone, who was a maker. I spotted it was a Wheatstone because of the label gave it away. Uh, just here, it's Rosewood. I'm personally, I'm a bit concerned about it having any great age. Right. Personally, I think this is a lot later than Victorian. Okay. The leather work on there feels as though it's been restored and re-leathered, yeah. but I can't see why anyone would do that with the leather work. I might be wrong. It's, it's a lovely condition. It's 
lovely quality, but I just think it's more likely to be 20th century or late 19th century. I'm happy to bid on it because I think it is worth money. Okay. I can see a profit in that. I don't think it's old, but I think it's worth a one. I don't know what you think about it money-wise, what you're, what you're thinking about it, what you've been advised. Yeah, we were thinking slightly higher. Yes. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It's off to auction already, isn't it? It'd be interesting to watch it. Yeah. yeah. It'd be interesting to watch it and see see what they say. Okay. So off to auction, yeah. Yeah, it is, okay. yeah that's fine. It's sorry, it's not for me. That's all right. Thank you. All very the best much. of luck. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. you. Too. Thank you. Well, Stuart didn't really have a lot of faith in Ricky and Julie's accordion. Will it find more accord in the cell room? Tell me where this accordion came from. Uh, it's an interesting story, really, but basically I own a pet shop and uh, one of my customers wanted to know that if anything ever happened to him, he had a good home for his parrots. Right, and um, how many parrots did he have? Four. OK. So, quite a few. Um, unfortunately, he passed away earlier on this year, yes. but he'd left me his house and contents um, in exchange for looking after his parrots. What's happened to the parrots? You've still got them? Uh, we've got one of them, Harry. Um, but three of them have all been rehomed, all doing really well, really happy. So, uh... I suppose that's what he wanted. What, what he had in mind was to find nice homes for his four beloved parrots. Yep. They also made a great deal to him. Oh, yeah, they were his world. Really? Yeah. Coming up now is the Victorian accordion. £100 reserve. Let's see what happens. I've got four commissions here, and I have to go in straight away at £360. At £360, in bid, it's made you walk away, hasn't it, sir? Who else wants a bid here? At £360, I've got it. £360, in bid at £360. At £360, I'm commissioning you all out in the room. £360, I have, and I will sell it this time. Away done for £360. <laughs> Commission bid. £360 from a very strong commission bidder. That makes about £325 coming home to you. First of all, really Ricky, what's your reaction here? Uh, shocked, to be honest. Didn't think I was going to get, get as much as that, but uh, you're very happy, okay. yeah. Well, that's what the game is about, gambling, if you think it's worth more. Julia, come on, what's your reaction to this? I thought that you was going to be telling me I should have took the dealer's offer. So, yeah. Yeah, I I'm very chuffed. So, very pleased? Oh, yes. Yeah. 325 quid. That was a cracking deal. That was the real deal. Back in the dealer's den, and a prestigious name on this spoon might measure up to a good deal. And do you know what the spoon was used for? Uh, it's a tea caddy spoon, as I understand it, yeah and it's made in silver. Mm -hmm. And that would show you just how expensive tea was and how people valued it Yes, at the date that this was made. Now, do you know the date? I do, because I did do a little bit of research on it and I understand it's, it's 18th century and I understand that the, uh, the person that made it was quite famous, quite a famous silversmith, so. so. Lift it up and have a look at it. So you've got this bowl shaped like a, a, a shell, a scallop shell, and you've got a handle. We turn it over, and here you have the hallmark. So we have a look at it. And it is, it's a George Head, London. And yes, it's HB. HB Hester Bateman, the great female silversmith mm. and head of the wonderful family. A little bit of lead on this side where it's been repaired and there's just a little split you can feel it with your finger just there which is a shame but it's where they always go caddy spoons always damaged where the handle meets the bowl. I never looked at it that closely I never realised there was any damage. Yeah. But it's a very nice article. Let's put yeah. some money on the table. Okay. 20. 40. 60. 80, 100, and 20. You're looking hesitant, and here comes uh, David to help you. Where are you going to find a piece of Hester bait? When we see that, we do this. <laughs> These are silversmiths that you bow your head to. 
great object. They could be fighting over that in the auction unless more money is down on the table. Thank you, David. So, a bit more money on the table. I think so. Well, let's see. Got 120 on. 140. 160. Now, I'm nearly at the end there. Right. How would you feel about 160? I think I was hoping for a bit more. A lot more or a bit more? Well, a bit more, I think. 180. So we have a deal. Have a deal. Thank you very Thank you. much. Coming up, the Duke's in the mood to disagree. But our independent valuers and our auctioneer have both said 40 to 60 pounds. I say rubbish. <laughs> Where have you been? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Hello, I'm Henry. Hello, I'm Trevor. Trevor, nice to meet you. Well, what have we got here? We have a lovely pocket watch. We have an Albert chain with a mounted gold sovereign. Um, what's the history? Uh, it was my um, father's and uh, it was uh, given to him as a 21st birthday present. Right. And it's been in the uh, family ever since then. I mean, what we have here, we have a nine carat gold Albert and we've got a full sovereign there that's mounted and the sovereign dates to 1912. But it's really the watch that we need to have a look at. Um, I love the watch. I presume you know that it's working? Yes. OK. Well, that makes a big difference because when watches aren't working, the cost of repairing them can be sometimes more than the actual watch is worth when it is working. So let's have a look at the back of it and we'll see what we've got. Right. Well, I can tell straight away we've got an Alfred Dennison watch case. That's the maker of the actual case. OK. And looking at the marks on the back, it tells me it's nine carat gold and it's assayed in Birmingham in 1924. There's no dents to the case, there's no scratches. I mean, you've obviously kept it very, very well. I mean, has it been something that you've just tucked it away? Or? I've kept it in, tried to keep it in pristine condition, as it was my father's. Yeah, okay. Right, well, let's start with this. 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300 pounds, 350, 400, 420, 440. How does that seem? I think... Just before we say tick-tock, Trevor, let me just tell you what the independent value and the auctioneer say. Both are saying four to five hundred pounds. Four hundred and forty is on the table. If you went to the sale room, there is a chance that you may get a little bit more. But it's for you to make up your mind. If you want to go to the auction, I'm going to be with you, tick tock. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Well, OK. Well, let's take this 40 out, OK? And let's put another 50, and I think we'll go back there to 490. How does 490 sound? Not too bad. Why do I think there's a but coming here? <laughs> I thought a little bit more would be, might seal us a deal. OK. I think we'll round it up onto the nose. Five hundred pounds. That seems as though we may have a deal then. Fantastic. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Trevor, thank you very much. That was a nice chunk of cash, Trevor. Let's head over to Corrie's table. And you've got a story to tell me about this, have you? Yes, I have. I was with my grandmother on one Friday afternoon after school and we used to visit a small shop in St Giles Street and my grandmother spotted this and fell in love with it. It was immediately put on my grandmother's dressing table and it was there until the day she died and I inherited it. And it is a lovely bowl. 
decorated with flowers. Take the lid off. And wonderful colours in the glaze, that lovely blues and greens, so typically Moorcroft. Let's look underneath and a nice early signature. So Moorcroft pottery made in England, beautifully marked. And I would think dating from the 1930s, would that be right? Yes, about that. That would be the yes, right? Yes, yes. Let's put this back on very carefully. Now, you've brought it along today to sell. Yes. Um, my grandmother also left me a, a ring, a five diamond ring. and my engagement ring and they don't fit my fingers anymore so I would like to spend the money on having them properly um, adjusted. Let's put some money on the table and see whether it meets your expectation. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 110, 130, 150. No, I don't think so. You don't think so? Can I offer you a little bit more? 170 on the table. It's up to you whether you want to take that. That is my final offer. I think considering all aspects, I would like to take it to auction. And I wish you the very, very best of Thank luck. Thank you very Have much. Have a good day out of the Thank auction. You. Will Jacqueline's considered decision prove the right one? We're about to find out. Coming up now is uh, this piece of Moorcroft. 180 to 220 is the estimation, and it's got a reserve of £200. Well, we know why Jacqueline wants the money. She wants to alter various pieces of jewellery um, so she can go out swanning around with her new... <laughs> diamond ring and perhaps adjust to your wedding ring. You're not taking your wedding ring off, are you? I've got to have it cut off. See, but will you be wearing it again or will you be going oh, out definitely. as a single girl or something? Oh, no, no, no. no. OK, <laughs> just checking. Not after 54 years. 54 years? <laughs> now, that's a good uh, record, isn't it? 54 years married? Fantastic. Here we are. We have the Morkoff powder bowl, always popular Morkoff. Is it going to sell? Well, we hope so. Here we go. A nice one there for you this time then. Where we are, the good disc, where to be for that? Can I get what? Uh, 220? 200? Where are we? 100 bid, 100 pound, 100 pound, 100 pound, 100 pound, 100 pound, only 100 bid. 110, 110, your 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, your choice at 180, 190, at 190 bid at 190, the front at 190, at 190, your choice. Blimey, we're close. 190, is it 5? 195, 200. Oh, that's better. 200, 200 quid, we're at the reserve. That's 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200 pound, anybody else coming in? I sell away this time at 200. OK, 200 pounds, the gavel has gone down. 10% commission, 20 quid to take off, 180 pounds. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are you satisfied? Yes, thank you. You're going home with 180 pounds. That was the real deal. <laughs> Back in the dealer's den, it's Stuart's turn to deal. For what, we don't know yet. Nice box. Yeah. You know what's inside it. A pair of silver salts. Tell me about it. What, what do you know about it? Well, not a lot really. We've um, had about five or six years. Um, came down the family, and you did. Um, that's about all I know about it really. Didn't know it existed before then. You know, uh, just been in a drawer. A nice, attractive, attractive little thing. First thing that I think about it is where's its um, blue glass liners, but they didn't always have liners. And when you actually look at this. It, it wouldn't actually fit very well. No. Uh, it's silver, it's hallmarked. It's about 19, 1900, 1910. I don't know how many people use them today, but they're the sort of thing you see in every nice china cabinet with a Correct. bit of silver in it. Yeah. Lovely things. You bought it to sell it, I'm going to try and buy it. Good. Okay. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 quid. How does that grab you? Well, it's, uh... Very good offer, but um, Very good, I I'm thought. sure you could go Do you really? slightly more. You don't think I've actually put all my money on the table at once? Not quite. 
You're right, 120 quid. Now, just before you say anything, let me put my two pennies in here. Now, I know silver is not doing well at the moment in the sale room, but our independent valuers and our auctioneer have both said 40 to 60 pounds. I say rubbish. That's got to be worth more than 40 to 60 pounds. I think Stuart is right on the money. I think he's giving you a fair price. Accept that and let the lad get on with his business and make a profit. Well, thank you, David. Yes, thank you. Yeah. So that's interesting how they how low they rated it, but that's, right, that's yeah. the market. But I like it. So is that your final offer? That's my final price. Okay. We have a deal. We have a deal, Stuart. Excellent deal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Coming up, David sings the praises of this music stand. I would say to you, do not sell this under seven hundred pounds. But it's Stuart who's buying. Will he hit the right notes? 20, 40, 60, 80, 300. Find out in a moment. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Northampton. We've seen lots of money change hands today. 500 pounds. 120 quid. 170 on the table. Let's hope it continues. What's the story behind this lot? Uh, well, basically, um, it was through my grandfather, who I, I never knew. He died in 1950, nine years before I was born. Right. And um, my dad uh, left when I was two and emigrated to Canada. Never knew him. And when I found out that he was quite ill towards the end of his days, I was notified and I went over to Canada. And that's when I found lots of artefacts and, you know, worked okay. it all back from there, basically. OK, let's look at what we've got here. We've got two lots of things, so we can divide it into two sections here. We've got First World War and we've got Second World War. Now, if we just have a look and see who this was awarded to, and we've got here F.C. Howard, able-bodied Royal Navy, OK? Now, that's quite a nice little group. We've also got a little bit of provenance here, and this is... Frederick Charles Howard is his copy of Certificate of Service in the Royal Navy, and that's just a nice piece of provenance to go with the group. Now, the second group, the interesting thing about Second World War medals is that they have a standard value, but you can add a bit or a little bit of a premium to the value when you've got the original box that they came in. In this, this instance, we have actually got that. Right. So we know from what we've got, your father was also in the Royal Navy, and we know that from the medal that we've got here. Mm. Um, let's see what we can do. OK, what we're going to do, we're going to say 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 pounds. 20, 40, 150. No. Ooh, that was a very definite no. OK, we'll take that one back again. 160, 180, 200, 210. Are we getting warmer or are we there? No, no, the no we're not we're there. Not there. No. We're still not yeah, there. You've got any of those nice red ones, have you? Let's take that one back. And let's be a bit punchy. You wanted a red one? <laughs> There's a red one. Okay. So that's two hundred and fifty pounds. How do you feel about that? You put another blue one down. I'll go another ten. Uh, well, um, I was hoping for. Well, I've come in here because you're obviously fairly close to doing something. I mean, nice family medals these. Mm. You know, that's two generations that have gone into two world wars. So the independent value is, as said, two to three hundred pounds. I think the way medals are in the sale room at the moment, I think it's a realistic estimation, maybe a little bit on the low side. I'd like to be up around the top estimate and maybe even a little bit over that. But if you go to the sale room, we are on gambling territory and I want to point that out to you. Your call. Very interesting set. Thank you. Thank you, David. 
So, I take it we're not having a deal at 260. Uh, I don't <laughs> think so, no. OK, right, let's see what we can do. Let's take that one away yet again, OK? And let's see what we can do. We'll put another one of your favourite coloured ones down. OK. To 300, mm -hmm. OK? And then I'll be a little bit more generous and we'll put that one back in yet again. So we're up at £310. And that, I think, is a fair offer. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Well, fantastic. I think we have a deal. Thank Adrian, you very thank much. you. I'm delighted to own these. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Now, the Duke's always saying quality counts, and when it comes to watches, one name in particular never seems to go out of fashion. So, this is your watch? Well, it's my stepdad's watch. His stepfather's yeah, watch. Yeah. And would you like to tell me a bit about it? He used to like a lot of um, watches. He used to buy a lot, quite a lot of watches. And when my stepdad died, Mum said to me, could you take it and see how much it's worth? OK. So... It's obviously had quite a bit of work done to it. In yes, this. it cost him about £360 to get it done, cleaned and, you know... It's an older Rolex yes, as yes, well. Yes, it is. And this is a more modern... Modern war, yeah. Shop. So there's lots of... Yeah, and, it is. And some people that buy the older Rolex, they're mm. quite purist. Yeah, yeah. And want the bracelets mm. to be right to mm. the piece and so on and yeah, so forth. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's get the money. Right, OK. Fifty. Mm. One hundred. Mm. One fifty. Mm. Two hundred. Mm. Two fifty. Mm. And two seventy, Carmen. Am I getting close? No, yeah. not quite close. So you take back that twenty. Mm. And I put that to three hundred. And put the 20, so 320 would be my offer today. No, I think I'd go to auction. You'd like to go to auction? Mm. Okay, yeah. thanks, Lovely, thanks very much. Thank you All for the best. Me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, the watch has hit the sale room, but without its owner. Where's Carmen, David? Well, she can't make it today because she's got a prior appointment, so I'm looking after her interest. The question is, did she do the right thing? Let's find out. 23 is your Rolex Oyster Royal wristwatch, and I start at... £300. Start off at £300. Up £300. 320 340 360, commissions are out, 360 in the room. At 360 in bit at 360, got a 360 in bit at 360. At 360 in the room, I sell away this time then at 300 and 60. The gambler's just gone down at 360 pounds. Take away the commission, 10%, and that's 324 pounds. Alison, you were right on the money, but she just nicked a few more quid here in the auction, and that makes it the real deal. At £324, we'll be sending that money on to Carmen. Back in the dealer's den, Stuart sat with Stephen. They've lost the table, but gained... What is it, Stuart? I don't know what you would call it, but I'll call it a duet stand. Absolutely, yep, yes. So you've got uh, two people playing, hopefully the same bit of music, but... Uh, it two, usually on two different it. instruments. I have actually used it myself. Have you? Yes. I was going to ask you that, actually. So. You a musician? I, I am a violinist, yes. Right. What do you know about it? I know it's uh, William IV. Um, Is it? Uh, it's a bold statement. Do you 18... know how short that period was, William IV? 1830. 1830 to 1837. Yes. So I always sort of think when people say William IV, yeah. I'm fairly confident because I have been told that from other people that have seen it. Right. I came across it about 25 years ago in uh, an antiques market in London and just fell in love with it. I, I, I thought it was a really beautiful piece, especially the turning. Yeah, the, the, uh, the column is, is lovely. Oh, the column, yeah. You can't actually do this on an ordinary lathe. No. This is turned on an ornamental lathe, and uh, although you can do it, it's, uh, it's quite, quite, quite time-consuming and uh, therefore makes it that much more special, doesn't it, yes, when you've got a column like that? Yes. Right? I do like it. I'll be very honest with you, I have given it a very close inspection. Yes. Because there's a lot of fake ones of these on the market. I'm confident that it's a real one. Uh, do you know what these are for? Uh, 
candle holders. Yes. Candle holders that had uh, concertina action. Yes. So they had two or three branches, and that actually was a good sign for me. Um, so I think you bought, you bought wisely, you bought well. You're a musician, so why are you selling it? I've just got too much stuff. <laughs> I'm going to have a go at buying it. OK. OK. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. I'll just put it for what it's used for. 20, 40, 60, 80, 200. 20, 40, 60, 80, 300. Mm. Long face you've got. I had expected, <laughs> I, I'd expected a little more, perhaps. Well, for 25 years, I was a furniture man, as you know, buying and selling pieces of fine furniture. What we have here is a usable uh, working antique. The estimation from our independent value as an auctioneer is six to eight hundred. Right. It's low at six to eight hundred. It? it really is worth a little bit more than that. But the market is low. I would say to you, do not sell this under seven hundred pounds. If our dealer pays it, sell it. If not, auction. And if, it, okay. if they don't give the money there, take it home, wrap it up carefully, bring it out in 12 months' time. Thank you. More in line what you were thinking, I think. Yes. Well, I haven't actually finished bidding there. I was like, okay. trying to get your reaction. I'm not up at the uh, six, seven hundred mark, but I was quite happy to go to 500 for it. But listen to what I David think... said, I think you'll find that uh, I think I'll go to the... You're going to go to auction, aren't you? To, to the auction, yes. Well, all the very best at auction and the best of luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Coming up, will the duet stand hit a flat note in the sale room? And Alison prepares herself for a lip-smacking payout. I shall have to get my fingers ready. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. I've got Stephen here. Now, on the dealer's day, you brought a late Regency duet stand. Yes, indeed. I thought it was an exceptional example. You sat down with one of our dealers, Stuart Hofgardner, and he offered you £300. Now, what did you think of that offer? Not, not at all. A bit disappointed. Right, yes, not, not at all. There was a time, ten years ago, in the sale room when a Regency duet stand like that would have brought 1200 1400 1500 pounds without any problem six to eight hundred pounds is the estimation and the reserve is 600 pounds are they going to bite for it is brown furniture making a return well it should be it's coming up now we're on seven six now this time we're on to the Regency mahogany duet music stand what's that going to be can I have six seven hundred pounds for it 500 pounds well, 400 and start me. Three's bid at 300 pound, but at 300 pound, but at 320, 350, at 380, at 380, 400. They're at 400 now. It's still too cheap. You're at 420, at 420, 450, at 450 bid at 450, got a 450 bid at 450, your choice. At 480, at 480 bid at 480 bid at 480, got a 480 bid, you're outright, sir. At 500 bid, at 500 bid, at 500 bid. It's still not good enough, you know. This is a great piece of Regency furniture. At 520 in bid at 520, got at 520 in bid at 520. Looking for anybody else this time, otherwise I move on this time and sell away at 520. OK, gavel has gone down. Don't be disappointed because I'm going to say this to you. £520 it got to here in the room. That is a quality piece of Regency furniture. It'll fit in any music room. It's a little honey bun and I'm going to say, do not worry, take it home. Okay. Live with it a little bit longer mm -hmm. and very shortly, as the market turns with brown furniture, bring it out again and you will get your money for it. That's a great piece of quality. And the Duke says, quality will never let you down. And in the end, that will make its money. Back on Alison's table, it's the final deal of the day. I'm Nina. Nina and Paul have laid down a collection of gold that any medallion man would be proud to wear. And who owns the gold? Paul does. I oh. do. Yeah. <laughs> I bought it in the early 90s. 
when it was very fashionable. Okay. I used to drive my BMW convertible around. But now, because of gold prices sky high and through the roof, I thought it's time to sell. Do you have a price in mind? Um, sort of. I've had um, someone gave me like um, a quote. Before. Okay. Would you like to share that with me? Not at this moment. Thank you very much. Right. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of gold here. I've weighed it. Right. And we've got um, 200 grams in 9 carats. Right. And 16 grams in 22. Right, yeah. So, as I do my calculation... I have my figure. Did you see that? No. 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 <laughs> that was quick. That was quick. I saw the, I saw the money, eh? Yeah. Well, this is going to take a lot of counting here. I shall have to get my fingers ready. One, two, three, four, five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred, eight fifty, nine, nine fifty, a thousand. That was really quick, wasn't it? Let's make it quicker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two grand. Smells oh, sorry, good. you stopped. <laughs> Smelling good. Um, so anyway, two grand on the table. Yes, you can see that. Two one, two two, two three. Paul, on the table, hot cash. Hello, David. And when she says hot cash, Paul, <laughs> she means hot cash. First of all, two thousand three hundred on the table. I can tell you, if you were to walk round today to the bullion office and knock on the door, I've got this to sell, they would give you the spot price today of £2,450. <laughs> what I think is being offered here is more than fair. I think Alison is giving you a very, very good price. The girl's giving the money. <laughs> right, I know you cannot have been offered more than what was on this table. OK. I'm right, aren't I, Paul? Yes, you are. I am. So, Paul, Nina, you're taking my £2,300. What do you think? Well, it's, it's a reasonable offer. A reasonable offer? Yeah. <laughs> After all yeah. that the maestro has yeah. said, a re it's a blinding offer. What do you think? I'm not so greedy, so deal. OK. Deal. Thank you, yeah. Thank you, darling. Well, the 90s medallia man has lost his gold, but gained big hard cash. Can the same be said for our dealers? The damage to Corrie's spoon was so bad that she thinks she'll make a loss on it. Henry's keeping the medals for his own collection. He sold the gold chain for £390, but hopes to turn his 500 investment into profit when he sells the watch. Stuart let the salts go for £140. Alison still has 31 Toby jugs, but came up trumps. She waited for the gold price to go even higher and sold for £2,800. <laughs> We've had a great day here at Northamptonshire Cricket Club. There's been lots of action, lots of buying, lots of selling. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.